I did it with um, the cactuses or the cacti in the flower shop, but they were like a really, really simple process. So gonna, we're going to see if we can actually work it out with trees, which are like a few levels deep, aren't they? The thing is, is it's kind of exponential as well. Like if you make a bunch of points, let's say you're making 10 trees, then that's fine, right? You can make 10 tree trunks. But then if each tree trunk has 100 branches and if each branch has like 100 little branches, and every step that we've done, uh, your forest is going to feel like it's getting like way, way heavier for every one tree you add, because it's going to be computing all of that data live. But yeah, every time we do anything, we're going to have to realize it as well. All right, so we've got uh, just a grid with distribute points on faces. So this is what I'm talking about, like starting at, in kind of the from an artist point of view, like the uncomfortable place, because it's like, I haven't even made the tree yet, but I still need to know where all the trees are going. And then on here, you can just go and instance your thing, which might be quadratic per se, and then maybe we randomize the center position. So if we start at the start at zero, and we'll just go up to like three meters, we can randomize the scale. Um, and then 1.5 for the middle, oh wait, uh, in the Z. So it's just, it's like a straight zero, one, two. And then we want to randomize the middle handle position. Uh, actually, first, let's randomize the general scale. Um, so I'll just use normal nodes for this. So we're going from like 0.8 to 1.2-ish, right? And trees pretty much always grow up straightwards. So you, even if you have like a wonky ground, I would still leave them vertical. And then if we want to move the middle handle, which is going to be feature these trees, like the handle, which is index uh, one, because they're, they're all going to be zero, one, two. Uh, so we want to randomize the position or offset the position. So for this, we can just use a set position, I think should be fine. We're going to need to realize these to make them into something that we can actually modify independently. And now that we've realized it, actually, do you know, I don't know how this works with curves, how it's going to with our control points oh yeah so i think we're still going to need to uh modulo right aren't we it's not just going to be equals one so just take the index and then a modulo node so we're going for three because there's three points so we want it to be uh, like zero one two zero one two zero one two and then also we need a new compare node it's going to be float and we're going for wherever it equals one because that is our middle point so this is now just going to allow us to interesting so that's not the handle let's just go for um the set handle position oh that's doing it as well interesting so in that case it doesn't matter about using the quadratic bezier to begin with might as well just use a a line because that'll be cheaper right uh, so curve line i'm just going to go up to three meters and then we're going to we realize them we're going to resample curve with a count of three so now each one goes to three points and now we're going to randomize the middle position by adding a random vector so we can just use a set position like before and then there we go, that's working now. So now we can just use, again, another random value node. I'll set this to vector. I don't want to move it in the Z, so I'm just going to go from like minus 0.5 to 0.5 in the X and Y into my offset. Okay, now we've got some random, random directions. Now we can make them smooth by turning them into Bezier curves. So set spline type from poly to bezier. And then we also need to set the handle type from free, which is now or actually aligned, which is where the handles follow uh, like the curve. So you get sharp corners. Um, so if I add a bezier curve, if I have these, yeah, so you have two control points. This is why beziers need resampling if you want to instance more things on them because they technically only have two points 
uh, but each point has handles. So when it's saying like a left and a right handle, uh, that's what it's talking about, left and right. So what we're actually doing is we're offsetting the handle positions, but not the original points. And that is how we're going to get the smoothness. Uh, so we've got our Bezier. It now has uh, auto, which is going to give this this nice smooth. So you can see that now we have smooth curves for each one of our trees. You could also randomize the top position. So you could do like just where it's like greater than zero and then like the base is going to stay still, but the top's going to be randomized. But maybe that's a little bit nicer. And then I want to set the radius and then do like a curve to mesh. So curve, curve to mesh. Uh, but I also need to just do the radius first. And then this is with a float curve and a curve parameter node. Or is it now the spline parameter? The spline parameter into the float curve into the radius. And we can just stick a circle on here. Uh, so circle, I guess pine trees probably have like a maximum radius of like 0 0.15 maybe? Or 0 0.2? Uh, but when we do this, you might see that we actually don't have many points. Like we only still have three points because it's that, like what we were talking about before with the quad, with the Beziers, they don't actually have multiple points to con like to hold data like radius data. So we want to also just resample these curves to have more points so that we can do something a little bit more uh, like specific with these. You could even uh, randomize this as well, right? So you can basically randomize all data. So if you'd set this to a float, maybe add a math node set to multiply. And then you can just have this like randomize a little bit. And then each point is just going to feel like a little bit more gnarled as trees. All right. So now what we want to do is actually distribute points on these. So you could, if you were working on just a single tree, right? If you were just doing a single tree like this, all you really need to add to the beginning is your distribution thing. And instead of like just working on your line, you just need to make sure that you're instancing and then realizing that. And it should, I guess, all follow through. But like this scattering system has to go at the beginning of your generation. So at this point, we can go through uh, distribute points on surface and then instance on points. Let me just mute that one for a sec. But I want to control where these go. And we have lots of different, potentially different Z positions. So I would use the curve parameter. Right now we have a mesh that we're using. So we need to capture the curve parameter before it goes through the curve to mesh. So attribute, capture attribute. Going to be grabbing a vector. Oh, no, we're not. A float. Uh, and this is our curve vector. So now it's like held on the mesh, even when it becomes a mesh. Uh, so then you can just use this as like with a map range or a float curve or something, and then this can go into your density. Uh, so where the float curve, sorry, where the curve parameter is equal to zero, that's at the bottom. And that's where you want more density, right? So that can be like 200 or something at the bottom. But you also have to bear in mind that because you have like this shape tree trunk, you also have a larger surface area lower down. And the density is per meter square. So you're already going to be getting more points at the bottom. Um, so it might be kind of useful to have it go through a float curve as well, just so that you can control that fall off a little bit. Um, so maybe that's like, I don't know, 20 at the bottom? And like three at the top or something like that? Um, and yeah, you can just kind of control this as we go. I'm just going to set the rotation through to the rotation just so that our points are going to stick out straight. And I'll just use again curve lines. Um, so now we have curve lines which stick out from the tree. We need to set the scale as well for based on the height so that we get that kind of triangular tree shape. Um, just thinking how much of this can we just straight up reuse? So we definitely want the re-realize, resample, set position where it's ignoring that first position because obviously that wants to be on the surface of the tree trunk. Setting spline type, handle type, resample, set curve radius, 
this is pretty much all going to want to come through together. See, this is why we want loops, so that we could literally just put all of this in a loop and then kind of fractal build up our trees. Um, so I'm literally going to copy everything from that initial realize instances and I'm going to put it on afterwards here. And so what that's done is it's literally come through, it's taken our individual tree branches, which we can still sort out the length of, but uh, essentially it's just taken those, resampled them, randomized the positions, but not the ones against the tree, because they will have an index of zero, because now they're, uh, if we have our tree trunk coming up like this and we have a point coming off, then this is going to be zero, one, two. So we've just randomized everything which is greater than zero. So we've just randomized the position of these two. These should still attach to the trunks. And then spline type, smooth them out, resample, curve radius, and mesh to curve. So these just need to be now smaller for this row. Um, but we still need to sort out our, uh, like the length of these things, right? So that's going to happen over here. We need these branches, if I come back to here, to be longer at the base. Uh, and this is just going to be based off our capture attribute. So I'm just going to grab this, which is our original spline factor that we just stuck on that trunk, putting it through a map range. It's going to be controlling the Z uh, scale of the these new lines. We just go through a combine X, Y, Z here. I'm going to set the scale for one and one. I don't know if that's going to affect anything for it for a line, but it's probably a good practice just to make sure your scaling's at one. Um, and then what we can do is we can set the ones that are at the top, or the ones at the bottom to be bigger, and the ones that are at the top to be a bit smaller. So I'm just doing this on this map range. Uh, we can maybe make a few more of the higher up branches. I'm trying to find a single tree now. If I just join my original curve through to that resample curve, just so I'm getting these bits out of the way, just so I'm only making one tree. That gives me a bit of a gauge on how things are actually going to be looking. So I can change how this is going to be um, distributing based on this float curve at different points. Uh, we can set a different density, top and bottom. I guess I want to also have a join geometry in here as well. So join this one, which is our tree trunk. We want to have a look at this with our next one, which is going to be this one. So that's all of these. So we can see these are starting to get a bit smaller. Those points are too random. So let's bring these in a little bit. Uh, go with like minus 0.1-ish to 0.1. So they're just going to twist a little bit. These can even go in the z-axis as well, right, for the branches, because they're going to be uh, up and down. It doesn't really matter. I'm going to point to something like that. And maybe these are a little bit thicker than I've got them. And that's going to start working like that. So how can we get this so that we're actually transferring our original curve attribute onto these branches so that the top ones are also thinner? Um, we're going to need to do a little bit of transferring from our mesh, and this is going to go in here. Um, I'm going to assume you don't have the toolkit, or people watching might not have the toolkit, so we'll do this manually. We're going to be taking a transfer attribute. Now, this is a bit confusing because we do have the capture attribute node on here, which can hold stuff on the instance domain, but I found when realizing instances, it doesn't actually transfer to the instance directly, it gets written to zero. I don't know if that's a bug or if that's just that it's not been integrated or uh, implemented yet. So I'm just going to do this the nasty way, which is to scale all of your instances down to zero, transfer them by proximity, and then transfer them back to the correct instances by index. So we're just going to come in here like this. Uh, I'm using this original attribute once more, which is my transfer. So the points Actually, do you know, I'm not sure they're on the point. So we'll use the original mesh. So that's what we want to do. And then we want to transfer this by nearest face. In this case, it's fine because the mesh does actually have faces. And then we're going to take an instance, scale instances node. 
I'm going to scale down to zero. So what this does is it brings them down to a singular point, which means that we can now actually uh, transfer that attribute from... So basically it's adopting the attribute based on the location, and because they're in a singular point, they have that like exact value. But then I want to transfer it by index back to my actual instances. Um, and just for like my own peace of mind, I can also just capture that on here. Uh, if I view this, then what I haven't done is realizing instances, and I do need to do that. So we're going to just realize these ones after they've been scaled to zero, just so they can take on that attribute, the original trunk curve parameter. And then we're going to realize these ones as well, just to make sure that we can actually transfer this by index correctly onto the original ones, which are still the correct scale. But now, because of this pretty nasty process, we've been able to get, hopefully anyway, the, uh, the correct curve parameter onto them. So now we should be able to control the radius of our branches individually by the position that they come out of the tree trunk. We'll have to see if this actually works, though. I guess another multiply in here so that we can control this a little bit. Let's have a look at the thickness. Uh, so yeah, that's controlling the thickness on there. If I just meet that, actually, just so that we have kind of tubes. And uh, if I take this attribute, just so that we can kind of debug what's going on. So that's working. We now have a one at the top and a zero at the bottom. We're just going to need to flip that with either take a math node or I'm actually going to do a map range so I can have a little bit more control. I'm going to bring back our branch taper. I'm going to flip these outputs around. I don't want to go all the way to zero just to give us a little bit more thickness at the base there. Something like that. Just so they're a little bit more spindly. And we can go back and change our value for the Z height as well. Just to make sure they're nice and tight in at the top. And then if we come forward to the end again, it's basically done the same process. And we can just duplicate all of this again, right? So let's find out where we are. We're going to come from... <laughs> just got to actually work out what's going on. Uh, I might be overzealous when duplicating that before setting these up. Right, so it's practically the same setup. I'm just going to actually duplicate a few more nodes here. I'm going, all right. I'm just trying to work out where I'm actually going from and to. We're going up to, I'm only going to do three levels of branches. Uh, and then you can just like instance pine needles on the next level. So in theory, if I copy all of these, including that reroute, and we also want to control the scale of these, which is going to come off that one. That's fine. All right. So I can just take all of these and then duplicate. And there we go. In theory, unless I've messed up, this should work. But just join that up with the attribute, join this up into the scale. Now we should have a little bit of control for things. Uh, these ones could be a little bit shorter. And in theory, this is all going to be passed through correctly. I'm going to make these even smaller for the ones at the end. And uh, I'm going to make them even thinner just do wherever and even shorter which happens over here and there's a random let's set this down to like minus point oh five just so the wiggle is not too much on these ones but we might want more density basically like as the branches get smaller you're probably going to have more of them as offshoots uh, so we can just like increase that a bunch. And then we can just join this onto our output in the theory. Like, I know it's a pretty hideous nightmare tree, but it does 
kind of do the trick of like instancing and carrying data forwards. Oh, of course. Oh my god, I forgot. I think it's going to tank. Let me just add pine needles and then I think it's going to go horribly as soon as we um, start adding things. Uh, I'm going to add... If I add pine needles to everything but the trunk, right? Because the trunk probably doesn't have needles growing on it, so we'll just use these two as our distribute points on faces. And I'm just going to be distributing these kind of everywhere. Let's just go ahead and use a cone directly. And we can make it super low poly. Depth of like two centimeters. Bottom radius of like a millimeter. Is this too small? Maybe. All right, this is going to be pretty high density. All right, let's see what happens if we make, um, I don't know how many we're about to make. Let's just save. If my stream crashes, <laughs> maybe I should actually just do this in, uh, we'll just go straight for cycles. Handling the data, trying to like shuttle around data in geometry nodes is not a clean process at the moment. That's like what I've been finding repeatedly is it's like, oh, how do I, is this going to work? Like, am I going to actually, like, I think if I capture an attribute here and pass it out, it's going to work. But then like, I just, I'd never know until I actually click something. All right. Are you ready for like 500 trees? I don't know if my computer is ready, but we will see. Wait, let me save. Optics. Error. We have... I mean, it has calculated the scene. We have 50 million vertices. Hmm. This is kind of the issue with uh, actually in, like realizing things, especially a forest. <laughs> All right, so I've turned that down a lot. Uh, and then there's our branches. And then there's our minor branches. Oh, wait, I didn't pass an attribute through hang on we weren't even going to get the full effect of it anyway so this is good so if you want to make in like completely unique trees then the way that we're doing it here is the way uh, but obviously i mean you can see that it's, you know you have the potential for it to get very heavy <laughs> all right so now we have some super tall ones just to like have a point of difference um, so, you know, I might just turn down the distribute points on faces from 4,000. Alright, we have, we have trees. 